So what would I do if I ran Cadillac? This is a question I have thought about for many, many months. I thought about doing a video about it and I decided against it until I started to get some comments on some of my videos, which were, what would you do if you ran Cadillac? And most of those were around the video I did about if I ran Acura. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to go do so, but the too long didn't read is Acura makes really nice vehicles, but because they're typically based on Honda products, they end up feeling like nice Hondas. They don't feel special. And that's what a luxury car should feel like. And it's where I think Cadillac is striving towards, but not quite there. They've had a major fall in the past 40 years and Lexus, Mercedes, BMW, even Jaguar has well passed them, but they're struggling back. They're not there yet, but they're, they're working on it. And what would I do different if I was running Cadillac? I've come up with three things. The first is pretty obvious and subjective. The second is systemic and the third is kind of a Hail Mary which we all know will never actually happen. So let's talk about it today. So welcome back. If you haven't been to my channel, please click that subscribe button. Please mash that like button. Really helps me with the YouTube algorithm, but looking at Cadillac, I have a soft spot in my heart form. My parents owned Oldsmobiles and Buicks until 1986. My grandparents owned Cadillacs on one side and Pontiacs on the other. So I have a really soft spot for them as American luxury. And I want to see them do incredibly well. But for most of my life, I've been frustrated about what they actually offer. But to understand where they are today, I think you need to look back in the past. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know this is an editorial. This is opinion pieces, and I'm not trying to cover their entire history over the past 100 plus years, but it's important to understand where they come from. Cadillac actually originates with Henry Ford. He started a company and walked away from it. He started a second company and ended up walking away from it. And that second company became Cadillac. See, the lenders, the people who owed money on it, reached out to a talented engineer by the name of Henry Leland. Now Leland already had his own company. He had taken an Oldsmobile engine and upped it in power. Leland, as an engineer, believed in precision, so much so that he would take products that were machined, like pistons, and set up a testing procedure. And if they didn't meet his tight requirements, they were either remachined or thrown away. And because of those tight tolerances, he could offer much more power out of an engine. So he had a one cylinder engine Oldsmobile had just over three horsepower, his offered over 10, and the creditors for Henry Ford contacted him and said, hey, what can we, you know, how can we liquidate this stuff? And he convinced them that they could take the Henry Ford frame and produce a car with his engine, and that became the first Cadillac. Now, Cadillac was named after the guy who founded Detroit, and very quickly, it got a reputation for reliability, durability, power, and luxury. In 1908, they entered what was called the Dewar Trophy. Now, this was set up by a Minister of Parliament. As far as I can tell, a manufacturer could recommend, here's what we want to you know, uh, uh, try to do. And they provided three cars. Those cars were driven around, disassembled down to their individual parts, and some of the parts were picked out, the precision parts, and locked away. They ordered replacement parts from the distributor and hired a mechanic to reassemble three cars. 
and then those three cars were driven around more to prove the interchangeability of parts. It's important to remember that in 1908, many manufacturers of the early cars were craftsmen. You can imagine them building a frame out of wood and bending the metal around it to create the body. Things were machined specifically for that car. So the interchangeability of parts was really important to the development of the automobile. While Henry Ford was working on the manufacturing and streamlining, making cars as cheaply as possible, Cadillac was working on precision. They continued their development. They came up with the first V8 mass-produced production engine for a passenger car. They came up with a V12, a V16. They ended up with an 8.2 liter in the 70s, as I recall. They led the way in so many innovations, and a lot of what we take for granted today came from Cadillac Innovations. Do you like getting into your car today and either turning the key or pressing a button to start the car, that electronic starter? That's Cadillac. Do you have automatic climate control in your car? That's Cadillac. Do you like all electronics, including headlights? Cadillac. How about auto dimming headlights? Cadillac. They pioneered so much in the world of automotive through their entire history. And through the 50s, 60s, and early 70s, they were the pinnacle of luxury. Now, certainly, you've got the Bentleys and the Rolls Royces, maybe Jaguars and Mercedes out there, but Cadillac was the bomb in America. And they produced ever larger, more spacious, heavy cars lots of chrome, leading the world in styling, tail fins, and they were the pinnacle of excess. By the 70s, things started to change. They began to rethink their styling philosophy. The chrome started to go away. The fins went away. They started to make things a little more monochromatic, let's say. But by the mid-70s, the gas crisis seasons hit. And... Cadillac knew what was coming, so they began their first generation of downsizing, taking out weight, shrinking things up. Keep in mind, Cadillac had been using a front-wheel drive system since, I believe, the 60s. So General Motors was a forerunner of mass production of front-wheel drive. The 70s saw the reduction in their cars, and in the 80s, they saw another massive reduction a massive downsizing, unibody, front-wheel drive cars. The problem is they kind of lost their way. Mercedes was ascendant, BMW had come out with 2002 and then ultimately the 3 Series, and Cadillac realized that people wanted a premium, quality, innovative, powerful, and well-handling car, not just big and soft. And they tried to respond by shrinking their cars. And in the late 70s, early 80s, they came out with the Cimarron. This was based on a Chevy Cavalier. It was deep in development when Cadillac said, we want one. We want to compete with the BMW 3 Series, the 2002. So they went after what was a Chevrolet front-wheel drive 88 horsepower car. Basically optioned it up, put a Cadillac logo on it, and it was a major flop. People could see right through this level of brand engineering. They sold this car for seven years, but it's arguably the car that destroyed Cadillac's reputation. Through the 80s, they had bad engines, bad transmissions. They developed the 864 engine, which was an eight cylinder engine that could drop down, deactivate cylinders to work at six or four cylinders for improved fuel economy. It's a great idea. Cars use this concept to the day, but at the time the technology was too far behind, it was rough, it was unreliable, and it was quickly canceled. 
Cadillac by the 80s was on the ropes and they swung for the fences. They developed a couple of new platforms and a brand new engine. I did a whole, in, uh, a whole video on it called the North Star System, which was not just a modern overhead valve, variable valve timing engine, but anti-lock brakes, magnetic ride control, speed sensitive steering, really trying to tackle what was coming out of Europe at the time. But let's keep in mind by the early 90s, Lexus and Infiniti were coming and Acura had already come on the market. By the early 90s, the North Star was award winning. The STS had come out, the downsized other Cadillacs had come out and they were well received and in some cases award winning themselves. I had an opportunity to drive in the mid to late 90s an STS and I loved it. Cadillac came to my city and offered an opportunity to drive a BMW 5 Series versus an STS. And I'll admit, brand new, I preferred the STS. It was larger, it was powerful, it was comfortable. The 5 was basic and just kind of cold, honestly. Now hindsight will tell us that the 5 Series was carefully constructed, durable, and reliable. The STS, eh, not so much. The North Star ended up with a lot of problems. The air suspension ended up with a lot of problems. The electronics ended up with the problems. And honestly, the interior, while being presented well, was just less durable, less luxurious materials. This continues what Cadillac has been doing for years. I want to love Cadillac. And General Motors has invested a ton of money in Cadillac. Even when they hit the bankruptcy, they kept Cadillac and invested tons and tons of money in it. They had switched to the arts and science language, evident with the early CTS, which was very angular and harsh. They've softened it, they've refined it over time. And the current Cadillacs are really attractive. I like them a lot. I like them about 95%. But that means that there's 5% that holds me back. While I really like what Cadillac's doing, they're held back by platform sharing and generations, literally generations of bad decisions. Consider an article I read that compared Cadillac and Lincoln. Cadillac got a ton of money to revitalize their offerings and expand. And so what you have now is Cadillac has moved closer to the SUVs. They still offer sedans, but they've moved where the market is going and they've expanded. But to do that efficiently, they've had to rely on platform sharing with other GM products. So several of their products are based on the Chevy Equinox. Good product. Several of, well, one of their products was based on the Chevy Impala. It's been canceled, but a front wheel drive large platform. They do have some Cadillac specific platform engines, but ultimately they're just a division of General Motors. A really, really nice Chevy. And that's what pains me so much about it. Lincoln invent, uh, invested much less money over a long period of time. And for most of the past 10 years, I would say that Lincolns have been not nearly as nice as Cadillacs. Their exterior styling, their interior styling, their interior quality, the ride, the handling, the engines, everything about them. But they've continued to improve their cars. And the latest generation with the Nautilus, the Navigator, the Aviator, and certainly the Corsair, I think they've leapfrogged Cadillac. Their interiors are higher quality, they're better designed, they ride better, and they hide the fact that they're based on Ford platforms much, much better. It's hard to take a platform that's designed for the mass market and up it to luxury. Audi has been pretty successful with it. But when you look at Mercedes and BMW, they're independent and they develop platforms for the luxury market. 
certainly Jaguar and Land Rover, they're working together, they're sharing platforms, but again, those are both aimed for the luxury market. So there's something special about how they feel, and that's what I think Cadillac misses. That's what I've said before in that Acura video. It's hard to take that basic platform and make it feel special down the road. Now, styling and feeling, that is, that's subjective, right? You might disagree completely with me. I get that, I understand it, I respect it, but Cadillac has that problem. So here's my three thoughts on where Cadillac could fix themselves in the future. And the first is, is styling, right? Exterior, it took me a long time to figure out what it was. I think Cadillacs tend to look low and long, and it's a, it heralds back to their history of being really, really big when the BMW E's, S's, the Lexus LX are much, much more taut and space efficient. But I think it's a little bit of an optical illusion. They're looking to design things low and that appear long while they aren't actually that big. The problem is, is I think in the front end of the cars. And again, this took me a long time to come around to, but if you look at Audi, Mercedes, Lexus, even Genesis, they take the grille and extend it below the horizontal plane of the front bumper. Cadillac stubbornly refuses to do that. They take the front grille and they kind of bend it down a little bit into a trapezoid but they're not really breaking the plane of the bumper. While this can be done incorrectly, take the new BMWs, which are hideous in my humble opinion, Cadillac has gone too far so that it actually is a clean, modern look. It is also slightly old fashioned, and I mean old fashioned only 20 years ago. They're not heralding back to something from their heyday of the 20s or the 50s, but just a slightly old design. They're not breaking that plane. Interior-wise, they're using materials that are just not at the class they're trying to play in. They've changed the styling. They had originally this black, glossy plastic with chrome trim that you could touch. It was hideous. It was really, really cheap. They've changed that, made it much more attractive, but still it's a cut below what Mercedes and Audi are offering. Their engines are pretty good. Their transmissions are pretty good. It handles pretty good. Everything is pretty good, but from a styling perspective, I think they just need to up their game. They've become a little, a little conservative and they're not trying to lead the class. They're trying to refocus. And I think they need to really swing for the fences here. Premium cars, luxury cars should have presence. And that's something that Mercedes does, BMW does, Audi does, and Jaguar does. I think Lexus does it too. I'm not sure about Acura and Infiniti. And I don't think Cadillac does it as well. They're nice cars playing on the reputation, but they're presence doesn't quite exist the way some other manufacturers do. That kind of leads me to the second thing I would change, which is systemic. And this is much, much more controversial. This is much harder that General Motors controls Cadillac. And so General Motors is like, we need to expand in the SUV market. Here's some platforms you need to use. We need this kind of car. Here's a platform you can use. Cadillac has been given a lot of leeway to improve platforms, improve their cars, and create a Cadillac out of it. But ultimately, they're still held back by the bean counters over at General Motors. And I don't know that that can be fixed unless they loosen the strings and let Cadillac really invest in interiors that are gonna beat the competition, unless they're allowed to really modify platforms where it's completely hidden what's beneath the skin, I'm not sure they're gonna be able to beat the competition. And I think this is a systemic problem that General Motors has had for 50 years. 
they still have sales they still have profitability but they're hurting their long term in the process Cadillac sales are less than one half of what Lexus's are right now just in America and I find that to be a terrible shame but if you want something that's durable and reliable why would you buy the Cadillac when it's a GM platform and possibly GM engines and GM transmissions the facts bear me out here so the third solution would be that Hail Mary which is I think Cadillac should be cut free I think Cadillac should become an independent division much like Saturn was give it a chunk of money and say go make it or go fail change your warranty change your relationship with dealers change your relationship with the consumer build the best engines the best transmissions the best platform you can build products off of it go after the best of the world I think that's the message that they gave to Genesis and it's paid off in spades that's what Mercedes and BMW does on a year-by-year -year basis and that's what Cadillac needs but I don't think it'll happen GM had their experiments with independent companies before I don't know that they have the money to just give it to Cadillac to get them funded to start to act independently and GM is investing heavily in Cadillac with electrification and they've got the Hummer brand that they're leasing that they're releasing too I don't think it's in the cards I think we're stuck with Cadillac being where it is but at least I think GM cares about Cadillac they care about where Cadillac is going and trying to make it a more premium brand but I think they're held back there to, by their decisions and the limitations of the platforms and the engines that they have available I love Cadillac I want a Cadillac I'll be honest I want a Cadillac but here's the problem me personally talking to you I work with a guy and he had a Cadillac it was beautiful red large tan leather interior and I asked him about it and he was like oh yeah it's been great I mean I had problems with the suspension I had problems with this I had problems with this I had problems with this and so I traded it and got a new one and I found myself thinking if it had that many problems why would you get a new one so we're talking about a modern Cadillac okay we're not talking about like a 1965 Cadillac we're talking about a modern Cadillac it still had problems at the level you might expect to see from a Chevy or a GMC and he just bought another one that being said that's a group admittedly that's one person but why would I take that why would I buy a luxury car where I think there's going to be a problem in a relatively low period of time when I keep cars for 10 years when I could buy a Lexus and never think about it that's the challenge Cadillac faces and that's what I think they're not facing is the acknowledgement they have to build the best quality the best durability forget all the innovations such as their self-driving system electrification everything else they just need to build a car that's super reliable durable comfortable and holds up to help build the reputation up from where it's descended to this is my opinion I love Cadillac I want to 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 love Cadillac but your opinion might differ I'd love to hear from you let me know in the comments below again please subscribe please give me a thumbs up for this video but if you hate Cadillac let me know if you love Cadillac let me know but I'll be honest with you if I won the lottery and I had fifty thousand dollars and I had to put it down on a luxury car today it would be a Lincoln that's my surprise that's my bombshell for the video I'd get a Lincoln because I think they're so nice and they ride so well Cadillac has been chasing the Nuremberg ring they've been chasing handling they've been chasing BMW and they've lost their way as to what American luxury actually means but I hope they get it back because I'm actually absolutely pulling for them let me know your thoughts